Wow. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm so honored to be introduced by one of my role models. Thank you so much, Chris. Like Chris said, my name is Michaela Humphrey, and I am a proud lesbian athlete. I was born in Dallas, Texas, raised in Ferris, Texas, and I go to school in Lancaster, Texas. I'm a senior and I plan to go to college soon, maybe also in Texas. <laughs> I was very young, only 10 years old when I first came out to my parents. From as early as I can remember, my mom told us and she made us feel like we could tell her anything. I still, rem I still remember sitting in her waterbed explaining to her that I didn't like boys anymore at all. We laughed, we talked about it, and I felt great afterwards. That's also when I started playing basketball. That's another thing I knew at an early age. I just loved playing basketball. The sound of the court, the feeling when the ball swooshes through the hoop, the physicality of the game. I practiced whenever and wherever I could, right here in this ballroom if it were possible. <laughs> I was young and I was confident in who I was. Being an out queer athlete at 10 years old, it caused a lot of problems at school, with other family members, and on the court. I can't tell you how many times people told me that I didn't know what I was saying when I told them that I was a lesbian. They said I was too inexperienced. I couldn't possibly know what I was talking about. Never once did they correct the little girls who talked about finding their princess, despite their lack of experience. They looked at my clothes, specifically my underwear, and the fact that I ident identified myself as an androgynous stud and told me I was confused, that I belonged in the, on the boys' team or that I belonged in the boys' locker room. But I knew who I was, and I wasn't a boy. Being a girl, I was comfortable being a girl, but I wasn't going to be their kind of girl. They were the ones who were confused. Even, even with the challenges, I've had multiple people in, the cor in my corner. My mom, my best friend, my group of close friends. They're like family to me. They're my biggest cheerleaders. When I started playing basketball, I wasn't the best on a team. And I, when I say wasn't the best on a team, I think I've given the other team a couple of points. <laughs> but I was determined to make myself better every day that I played. Being an openly lesbian athlete is tough, and that's an understatement. I just don't have to be confident in my ball handling or my shooting skills. I have to work up the confidence to tell myself that what people, what people feel about who I am does not define who I am. I have to work harder to maintain my game time focus when I'm treated differently in the locker room because I'm gay. I not only have to compete to win on the court, I have to compete off the court just to be me. And there have been many times where people who were supposed to support me as a person and as an athlete took actions to hurt me in both areas. As a sophomore, there were many games I couldn't play because my coach forced all the girls to wear dresses. He knew I wouldn't wear a dress, and he didn't let me play. And I kept right on not wearing one. <laughs> He'd often tell my dad in meetings that I had problems at school and would have problems in life because I was a lesbian. At first, the things he said discouraged me. But then I looked around and saw the people who had my back and the people who supported me. I realized that it was only gonna make me stronger. I decided not to listen to him anymore. <laughs> I decided to play harder than I ever had before. We eventually got another coach who had her own set of issues. She used to tell me not to influence the other girls. She thought because I was a lesbian, I would try to recruit other girls. <laughs> you all know that's not how that works, right? <laughs> like Chris said, words matter and sports are transformative. Although these experiences were pain painful, I couldn't imagine my life without my sport, my supportive teammates, and my family. I've learned over the years to stay positive and I get a lot of support from my peers, while many adults at school still don't accept me for who I am. They call me names like Little Boy and Michael, but I pay them no attention. Instead, I feel my energy on the court and helping 
other students coming out to their parents and giving them advice on blocking out the negativity. I know a lot of the young people here today, you're probably also digging deep to, to do the same thing, to rise above the naysayers. I'm proud to consider you all, HRC Youth Ambassadors, my teammates. So now, I'm looking to the future. I'm ready for college, and I'm going to become a basketball coach and a counselor to high school students. I want to give students the kind of coach I didn't have, a coach who is encouraging and supportive, who treats individuals as partners in the organization, encouraging their input and trusting them to carry out assignments, a coach who doesn't bash and isolate players, who, who helps every player face their challenges, not one who adds on to the challenges. I can't imagine what my life would be without basketball or if I weren't a lesbian, and I don't want to. We all deserve the right to play. And I want to be the kind of coach who values a player like me. For all you coaches out there making the court safer and more welcoming for the LGBTQ players, thank you. We need more of you. And I'm looking forward to joining your ranks. Thank you.